Then Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the Ammonites and said, What do you have against me that you have come to me to fight against my land? And the king of the Ammonites answered the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel on coming up from Egypt took away my land from the Arnon to the Jabbok and to the Jordan, now therefore restore it peaceably. Jephthah again sent messengers to the king of the Ammonites and said to him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel did not take away the land of Moab or the land of the Ammonites, but when they came up from Egypt, Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea and came to Kadesh. Israel then sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Please let us pass through your land. But the king of Edom would not listen. And they sent also to the king of Moab, but he would not consent. So Israel remained at Kadesh. Then they journeyed through the wilderness and went around the land of Edom and the land of Moab and arrived on the east side of the land of Moab and camped on the other side of the Arnon. But they did not enter the territory of Moab, for the Arnon was the boundary of Moab. Israel then sent messengers to Sion, king of the Amorites, king of Heshbon. And Israel said to him, Please let us pass through your land to our country. But Sion did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. So Sion gathered all his people together and encamped at Jahaz and fought with Israel. And the Lord, the God of Israel, gave Sion and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they defeated them. So Israel took possession of all the land of the Amorites who inhabited that country. And they took possession of all the territory of the Amorites from the Arnon to the Jabbok and from the wilderness to the Jordan. So then the Lord, the God of Israel, dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. And are you to take possession of them? Will you not possess what Chemosh your God gives you to possess? And all that the Lord our God has dispossessed before us, we will possess. Now are you any better than Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever contend against Israel, or did he ever go to war with them? While Israel lived in Heshbon and its villages, and in Aurora and its villages, and in all the cities that are on the banks of the Arnon three hundred years, why did you not deliver them within that time? I therefore have not sinned against you, and you do me wrong by making war on me. The Lord, the judge, decide this day between the people of Israel and the people of Ammon. But the king of the Ammonites did not listen to the words of Jephthah that he sent to him. Then the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh, and passed on to Mizpah of Gilead, and from Mizpah of Gilead he passed on to the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will give the Ammonites into my hand, then whatever comes out from the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the Ammonites shall be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah crossed over to the Ammonites to fight against them, and the Lord gave them into his hand. And he struck them from Aurora to the neighborhood of Mineth twenty cities, and as far as abel Keramim with a great blow. So the Ammonites were subdued before the people of Israel. Then Jephthah came to his home at Mizpah, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with tambourines and with dances. She was his only child. Besides her he had neither son nor daughter. And as soon as he saw her, he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low, and you have become the cause of great trouble to me. For I have opened my mouth to the Lord, and I cannot take back my vow. And she said to him, My father, you have opened your mouth to the Lord. Do to me according to what has gone out of your mouth, now that the Lord has avenged you on your enemies, on the Ammonites. So she said to her father, Let this thing be done for me. Leave me alone two months, that I may go up and down in the mountains and weep for my virginity, I and my companions. So he said, Go. Then he sent her away for two months, and she departed, she and her companions, and wept for her virginity on the mountains. And at the end of two months she returned to her father, who did with her according to his vow that he had made. She had never known a man, and it became a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went year by year to lament the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite four days in the year. And when he had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, 
Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you, when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you, and hem you in on every side, and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you, because you did not know the time of your visitation. And he entered the temple, and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And he was teaching daily in the temple. The chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the people were seeking to destroy him. But they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were hanging on his words. Hello and welcome to Bible Time. Today, Judges chapter 11, verse 12 through 40. Uh, Beginning of chapter 12, we already heard that Judge Jephthah, he was installed as a leader for the Israel to fight the battle with the Ammonites. Jephthah tried to negotiate with the Ammonites concerning the land east of Jordan. Ammonites said this is their land and it was taken by Israel when they came out of Egypt. Jephthah argued and said it is not your land. This land belonged to Amorites. Also, it's a land that it was occupied by the Israelite for 300 years. Ammonite did not listen to Jephthah and went to war against him. So Jephthah vowed before the Lord, if God re- deliver the Ammonites into his hand, that he will vow and dedicate whoever walks into his home after the battle is won. Now God has delivered Ammonites into the hands of the Jephthah and he defeated the enemy of Israel. When he got home, the first person that walked in was his daughter, his only child that he had. Jephthah was so sad for he promised, he made a vow before God to dedicate the first person who would walk into his home. And it was his own only daughter. Now the dedication simply meant that she would remain unmarried rest of her life so she still agreed and became celibate which means unmarried rest of her life which at the time most people considered this to be the really really bad thing now luke chapter 19 verse 28 through 48 jesus continued his final journey to jerusalem riding on a young donkey Uh, People began to shout, welcoming him, honoring him as a king. And Pharisees told Jesus to stop them. Jesus did not stop them from honoring him. This was kind of strange because before, Jesus would always tell the people, whoever that he healed, not to tell anyone. But now, Jesus wants people to honor him. Why is that? Because it was time. It was time to finish his work, what he came to do. In few days that Jesus will be crucified on the cross and for the sins of the world. As Jesus looked over the city, Jerusalem, he began to weep for the people because soon they will reject the Son of God and crucify him. And not only that, that Jerusalem will be destroyed. And it did in AD 70 that Jerusalem was demolished. Soon as he walked into the temple in Jerusalem, he saw people selling animals for sacrifice and exchanging money. And it was like a busy market. Jesus began to be upset and overturned the table and scatter all the coins and scatter all the animals. And Jesus said, my house will be the house of prayer. The temple authority wanted to punish him, but they could not do anything because there are people, too many people following him and listening to him. So Jesus goes into the temple and he says that it is my house. He says, my house, and it will be the house of prayer. So one thing that we want to know is that there are many things that we could do at church, but I want you to know that the temple, the church, is a place of worship, a place of prayer. It is when we are meeting God and communicating with God. That should be the primary function of the church. So let us not forget, the church is a place of prayer. Church is a place of worship. It is a place where we encounter God and worship Him. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that Lord, 
that though we could do many things at church, let it be true that it will become a house of prayer, it will become a house of worship, that we would come to this place of church to worship you and honor you and talk to you and you speak to us. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.